We're up against Newgate today, a matchup that I don't come up against that often, but my opponent here has a max rarity deck at locals, so we're here to indulge in a little bit of aggro. It's a matchup that with a little bit of control can go a long way. Enjoy. Setting up our life totals here. My opponent goes first, does nothing with their one Dawn. That's of meaning to me, honestly. They play the Nami, and I'll eventually I'll get that down. I go to two Dawn. And uh, I, I got myself a Kaya on my opening hand, so that's going to be a good feeling there to just get rid of, you know, a Deathwink and a Mellow, just cards that I can't really cast this early, but I do have a bunch of Spottas that's going to help me set things up and just really get things going in the early game to um, kind of make things work there. So they swing lead for 6k there, counter out Spotta, goes to the bottom. I find myself cards that I generally don't want to set up right now i figured if i can get them later then i can set that up for a late game they find themselves a zero cost counter there they play themselves a nami and a two cost uh card there and then at this point i'm thinking okay i gotta bounce that i might get an attack in i might leave up some dawn to get some cards in but generally speaking here we do have to interact with the board that's how we're gonna you know kind of get this aggro out of the way newgate is a unique leader that loses a life every turn but that means they're gonna get hyper aggressive so i'm gonna bounce the sanji back to their hand and then pass the turn i can counter out with two one cost characters here they're gonna pop my kaya which is kind of unfortunate i could use that to kind of deal with the namis later on but i'm gonna then spot it again and i'm deciding like how i want to leave this i think i do want these cards on top but it's just in what order do i want them so i'm gonna generally keep these on top i'm gonna draw myself the mellow i'm gonna untap to six dawn draw my card and at this point i'm thinking okay now that five cost is going to start swinging into me do i start swinging in do i start getting some damage and maybe force out some counters out of hand and i can't really do that because new gates at 6k so i don't get that free swing i do actually have to commit dawn to make that happen so first i'm going to buggy and find myself a breakfast there and then rearrange the bottom and then this is where things are going to start mattering because i'm like okay i kind of know the bottom like seven cards of my deck right now so that's really going to matter later on i have some mill in there if i can get to it which is going to be good now they're going to swing in with that six i'm going to draw one card off the mellow which is not a great card there then they're going to swing in with leader and then i'm going to go with the gavel get myself some milling mill over these two cards they're going to swing in again i'm going to be able to mellow redraw so this is pretty good here now potentially i can get in an attack or two here just to kind of provide some pressure and force the board a little bit they play the two cost sanji just to kind of counter uh, like manage their dawn they're going wide so i'm going to peel off draw two cards find myself some not bad counters here i'm really just thinking how i want to use my dawn and i'm going to play the buggy instead of attaching to the nami and attacking in really what i want to do is find myself that death wink that i just found there so put the Deathwing into hand. I may not generally be able to play it this time around, but you know, as we're kind of approaching, kind of attempting get to get uh, to get to the middle of the deck and under 20 cards, that's when it's going to really start mattering. So I ultimately decide, okay, I'm going to have to start putting some pressure, getting some cards out of hand and then swing in. They're going to counter there. I'm going to bounce the Sanji back to hand and just kind of remove some of the pressure. So right now I can only counter once really. And I just hope that I can get that counter in there. And uh, they're kind of getting me to uh, just figure out like how many cards I have left. That's the counting we're doing. So right now, I believe if I remember correctly, I'm at 27 cards in deck right now. I'm under 30. That's ultimately the the um, math we get up to, right? Because the way you want to count this is uh, like the number of life and then the number of cards on the field, hand and graveyard. And then you just want to subtract that whole number by like 10. And that's the number you've you know, I, it, look, the math is kind of weird on this one, but it's fine. We ultimately get there. Our brains are both fried here, but they're kind of counting and making sure because if I can get like under 20 cards with five life with like honestly, even four life, I find myself in a good position. But then ultimately, my triggers have to be really good in this matchup because I think I can generally manage this matchup, right? This aggro right here, like we're actually able to counter out a lot of their early aggro, which is key. Like having this much life and being able to set up this much this early is actually really, really powerful and they're just kind of looking through my deck they're gonna do that a couple times and that's okay that's the type of information you're looking for right like how many death wings how many gavels like as someone playing against nami this is one you want to work against so they swing 5k i mill something over with the um the rubber band i should say kaya comes out and what i like to do is i like to bluff my life triggers a lot i like to kind of look at them just kind of look at the board uh they play their one cost out buffing by 3k i take the damage again put the kaya in hand and Really what I'm thinking about here is, you know, how do I counter all of this out? They're going to swing that and I don't want to lose my two Kayas. So I take the hit 
and then I rubber band trigger. So I'm just remembering the order here. So I draw then mill a card and then they're going to swing leader again. And I'm just going to take the hit here. Now, this is where I may have misplayed a little bit. I actually put that into hand instead of uh, bouncing something to my hand, which might have been better. But I figured, OK, I can leave that in my hand and maybe discard something for later. So at this point, I got like double death wink which is what I'm going to get into here. And I'm going to just swing into their like little creatures here. So 2K into 2K. And then before I make any decision, I just want to see how they counter out, you know, leader into the zero cost. And then at this point, we are going to play the Kaya, draw two, and then discard two. I'm going to discard one of the death winks and then one of the Zephs. This essentially makes it so my other death wink is just as maximized as possible. And to be fair, I probably could have just kept both death wings, maybe like drawn with one of them and, and then just like use the gavel like later on. But I'm going to play the other Kai again. And really what this is, is just aggroing through the deck, right? Like they're applying a lot of pressure. I'm at like no life and I need to, you know, draw through my deck. I'm going to Kai again, which is great. And at this point, you see, I draw gavel pilaf. I have to get rid of the pilaf. Right. And this may be a very rare case for a lot of you. You might not understand why this is happening, but you have to enable your late game. My death wink is going to essentially be a peel off at instant speed. And that's the idea here. So I have the classic love, love, mellow gavel death wing kind of quote unquote sequence combo that I'm trying to set up here. That's going to allow me to get through five cards in this combat. And that's why I don't want the peel off. Right. I, I generally don't want to be using Dawn on my turn. You want to be using Dawn on your opponent's turn. And while they count my graveyard, that's really what I want to explain to you. It's OK to let go of the peel off here because peel off is three Dawn on my turn, whereas Deathwink is a peel off on their turn. And that's how you want to be using this. You want to be using this in combat with their resources and make sure you have as many resources as possible up. So that's where you have to make crucial decisions like this to actually let go of a peel off and ultimately just be able to counter out more attacks and just deal with more of what's happening on their board. And really what I have to play for is like, hopefully they just don't have as many kind of rushers coming in and hopefully they just don't have ways to swing in. So they're just going to swing some vanilla. I'm going to redraw with that. That's great. Drawing myself a card pitchable to gavel, pitch the gavel, counter out that attack mill two. And then this is going to allow me to perfectly kind of death wink, draw two cards. And I'm pretty low in deck right now. Unfortunately, my triggers have just been absolutely awful. If I could have drawn like two life off my triggers, I would have been perfectly fine. So they're going to swing 11K. And then unfortunately, that is the third and last card that has ultimately been a character. Um, and that has been really frustrating. Actually, fourth, I believe. So I've managed to top deck another peel off, which is a great way to start. But essentially, I have to win this turn. And I don't think I can. I'm at 11 cards left in deck, I believe. So draw two cards. And I'm going to try my best to spin my wheels here. I don't know how I'm going to draw this many cards without Kaya's. And I'm going to kind of discard two cards here for the Apis ability. Look at the top five here. And this is going to allow me to grab that peel off that I was looking at with the second Apis. So that's what I'm wondering. I know there's a mystery card there. And, um, you know, I'm going to be able to shift to the top. And then I'm going to be able to play an Apis and get the peel off and keep going. But unfortunately, this whole... You know, 10 cards being drawn doesn't work without Kaya's. I need to be able to get Kaya's and recur them. So unfortunately, I had to play my Kaya's out early just to get through my deck. And this is where ultimately the math does not work out here. You're going to see me kind of drawing through, thinking, how do I make this work? Ultimately speaking, I I'll let you see how this turn plays out, but I, I don't get there. I'm forced to play another Apis just to kind of discard the last two cards in my hand and keep funneling through, but I just have way too many cards. Like, yeah, I find the peel off that I put there at the bottom earlier in the game, but you know, kind of three Dawn here just to draw. I know what those two cards are. It's not really going to work out. That's pretty much just going to be GG play it, draw those two cards. And then I just kind of hope they have a million cards in hand. And I'm just going to like attach two Dawn with Nami and swing in. They're going to counter once. And that's pretty much just going to be GG, but that's, that's so unfortunate. Honestly, if they, if one of my triggers, was a draw to I think I would have been perfectly fine but that's the GG there I'm not I'm not mad I lost to my triggers I feel like I played that actually really well in my opinion y'all may have your own you know kind of concerns and 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 whatever about it but I think I played that really well and ultimately my triggers are what got me GG's